So you need to get a computer to run Photoshop and you're not quite sure what exactly you need. So today we're going to be going over exactly your, your bare minimum, your kind of your mid-range and your high-end specs on what you need to get in a computer to efficiently run Photoshop. So there's two main things to run Photoshop. One is going to be your internal processor and the second one is going to be uh, random access memory. Those are the two main things you need to run Photoshop efficiently. Um, you don't need a high-end graphics card. The first thing that we're going to go into is the processors. So we have Intel here. And Intel makes a variety of different processors. The lower the number, uh, the cheaper it is, higher the number. So i9 is going to be more expensive than i3. And it's going to be faster and quicker and so on. You can run Photoshop on an, a core i3 processor. However, you're going to be much better off running on a core i5. I would not really go to a core i3 unless you had to. So I would usually stick with a core i5 and if you can afford it, go up to the i7. Um, they've just come out with this core i9, so that's available too. Um, but this is your minimum, this is your best bet, and if you can afford it, go for the i7. Now, processors also have other information. They also run at a certain gigahertz. You're going to be, they're going to be slower to faster. So the slower ones are going to process a little bit slower, and the faster ones are going to process a little bit faster. So the higher the megahertz, the quicker it's going to be. The last part is your cores. So there, you're going to have single core, dual core, quad core, six cores, eight cores, 16 cores. Most of your processors now are going to be either dual core or quad core or just coming out now, especially with the new Macs, you're seeing um, six core processors. So the more cores you have, the more threads you're going to have, the faster it's going to be. Um, two cores is going to be fine. Four cores is going to be uh, much better and if you can get more than that great but those are the two uh, what you're looking at as far as a processor so if you can get a, a, a core i5 with two or four cores um, that's gonna be uh, your best basic uh, bet if you can get a quad or a six core i7 you're gonna be much better off you're gonna really see the speed differences so the next thing that we have is random access memory. So random access memory comes in DDR3 and DDR4. DDR4 being the newest and the quickest and the fastest. Now not all boards or computers are going to accept DDR4. So you need to check to make sure what type of memory, because um, it's very specific to your computer, as to what kind or it is. Um, they're configured in a certain way. So what you're going to see is Photoshop says that it will run on 4 megabytes of RAM. However, I would not specify that. I would say the minimum you want for running Photoshop is going to be 8. 16 is going to be your best bet. And if you're a computer and you're going to be doing a lot of graphics and intensive programs like video editing and trying to run multiple applications at the same time, 32 is going to be helpful. So 8 is your minimum, 16 is your best bet, 32 is great. And so the reason I say 32 is um, 16 is fine for just running Photoshop, but if you want to run a couple other programs at the same time, you're going to need more memory to do that. So that's why I would say 32 is great. I'm running 16 on my MacBook Pro now. So um, that is going to make a huge difference. So your processor in this memory are going to be the two main things that Photoshop uses the most. So the next thing that we're going to go to in your computer, it's going to have a hard drive. And that hard drive is going to run your computer. Also, it's going to allow you to save data to it. So in this case, Photoshop most likely some sort of photo file. So most computers had been running on what's called a spindle drive, which is over here. So this is a three and a half inch spindle drive. It has mechanical moving parts. Um, the good things about spindle drives are uh, they will 
save a tremendous amount of data. So here, this is three terabytes, but you can get four, six, eight, and really cost effective. Um, however, they have, if you drop them, they can break because they have moving parts and they are very slow so that your data processing information, your read write speeds are very slow compared to a solid state drive. So a solid state drive is going to be very expensive for the amount of data. So where you can get, let's say, a four terabyte spindle drive, you might only be able to get a 512 megabyte solid state drive. However, this is going to be much, 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 much faster, way faster. And they're getting faster and faster and cheaper every day. So hopefully we'll see the prices on these go down over time. So the other good part about solid state drives, there's no internal parts. So hopefully if it drops, it's not going to be as likely to break. On a new computer, I would highly suggest that you get a solid state drive. Now you don't need a massive solid state drive to run your computer. What I'm gonna suggest is you get a solid state drive for the internal hard drive, and then you buy yourself an external hard drive to save your, data, your photos and all your files. So this is gonna run the applications and everything on your computer, and this is where you're gonna save all your data. If you have never used a solid straight drive on a computer and only use these spindles, just I'll give you an example in boot time. Um, I have an old 2010 Mac and it had an old spindle drive and it would take like 45 seconds to a minute to boot up. That same computer with the solid state drive in it now boots up in like 10, 15 seconds. So it's just much faster to run the computer. So that's why you're seeing almost everything now. Um, having a solid state drive in it. So the next thing that we have are graphics cards, so or GPU. So you might see it listed under as GPU. Now most of your i core five and seven and uh, small chips are going to have um, some sort of a processor graphics card. A lot of times built into the unit. So they won't have this external drive. This is something that you can add. And for Photoshop, that's gonna be fine. However, this is where video comes in. If you are going to be processing or editing video, you need the best and fastest graphics processor you can afford. Because rendering video is very labor intensive for a computer and you need uh, multiple cores on your processor in a really fast graphics card otherwise it could take forever to process video so Photoshop not going to be helpful however if you are processing video or uh, most people who are gamers are going to know this if you play games you're going to need an external graphics card that's fast the last and actually it's kind of actually important is your display and let me go up here to about this Mac and we'll bring this up and we'll hit displays. I would say the minimum resolution that you want to get these days for display is 2880 by 1800 or something around then. 2880 is the main number you're looking for. Um, you could get by with full HD, which is 1920 by 1080, but I wouldn't, you're going to see it in your images. The amount of detail and shadow detail that you get on a monitor with 2880 as opposed to 1920 is huge. So this is kind of like a 2K display. Then now they even have 4K and 5K displays. So anything this or higher is going to benefit you. And you will see this in your images. And it does make a big difference. Your color gamut is huge. Just a little bit about color gamut. And the gamut is, you know, what you can see on your monitor. When we're working in photo, most things on the internet and most PCs are set up in the sRGB color space. However, in photography, most people work in the minimum of Adobe RGB. It's been around for a while. And the reason is you can see it has a much uh, larger uh, color gamut. 
so it sees or it can display more color. And then we have out here what's called Pro Photo, which even has a greater color gamut. The problem with Pro Photo is almost you can't print to it, and most monitors can't display it. So you saw back there, I had uh, this monitor is a 2880 by 1080. And in the Adobe RGB color space, my monitor can actually only display 75% of the colors that are available in this space. So you can see if I had a 4K monitor, I might be able to see that whole um, Adobe RGB color space. I can see the whole sRGB, but just not the whole Adobe RGB. If you want to see lots of colors and have a, a wide color gamut, you're going to want to spend the money on a monitor. So if you have any comments or questions on what you need to get for a computer to run Photoshop and a little bit on video, um, you can leave comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.